Um, as I was sitting there, I was aware of a lady who's joined us from the spirit world, and I know that she wants to speak to her daughter. I know that this is a lady who um, was so, so close to her daughter. And as we were, um, as I was listening to that last piece, she made me so aware of her energy and her love for her daughter. Now, there's no evidence in that whatsoever, but I have to just say that. And I know that this mum uh, tells me that the last three years of her life, she had been so ill, she was having almost blackouts. She was very dizzy, um, very high blood pressure, had, had a heart problem as well, where she had palpitations. I know that her whole equilibrium was all over the place, and she was very, very frightened and very confused. I also know with this mum that um, she was somebody who had always had good health all her life, looked after <coughs> herself as well, immaculately dressed. Does anybody understand this at all? You do? You understand? Oh, well, the three years is three months. Just a minute. Okay. Would you not accept that um, the confusion started three years before she passed? Okay, sorry, I'm just wondering. Yes, I can take it. You can take all of that information, including the last three years. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, would you accept if, if um, we work together and I make sure we're with the right person? But um, would you accept that you and your mum were so so close? Yes. And almost, I know, um, inseparate. To be honest. Yes, she you know, loved That's how she comes that across to me, and that's what she's telling me. I certainly feel with her. But um, I know that that music and those words um, made, meant a lot to her um, because I know that's when she showed me her face against yours and showed me that that's what you would do. You would hug and your face would touch. Yes. Look, that's fine. That's fine. I know I'm with the right person. I certainly know with your mum this isn't... And this isn't a message I would normally give, but I know that it's to do with the environment. I know it's to do with the moment, and your mother was very spontaneous. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I know she's not somebody you could sort of push into a little slot somewhere and think of her no, as being stereotypical. No, no, you're good. <laughs> no, okay. Because that's why she wanted to come this morning, because she talks about her love for you, and, she, and, I'm, and I'm desperately trying to get more information from her, but she's just not interested. <laughs> Would you understand that? <laughs> okay. Because she just said to me, you know, I'll just do what I want to do. You know, don't, I, I'm not interested in what you've got to think. You know, and she could be like that. She could be rather blunt with people. Do you understand oh, that? Yes. And I know, also with her, do you know there was a problem with your mum's teeth at the end of her life? Oh, sure. Right, okay, I'm not going to go into that, but you understand that. And I certainly feel too that um, she she comes across as being somebody who's very strong-minded, very single-minded, so focused, all of that. But at the, those last three years of her life, she just wants to wipe them away because she said, this is so not me. Would you understand that? Yes. Right. Um, I do feel that she was always in control, and I'm not saying she's a control freak, that's, that's me. Oh, you can say it. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what she tells me, she was always in control. But she was really very tactile, because she keeps reaching out for your hands all the time. Would you understand that? Yes. And she also takes you to a garden that was very pretty, that she would love. And I know it's got a patio, do you call it patio? Yeah. yeah. Um, you've got a patio with um, the, the tubs and the pots and all of that around it. Would you understand that? Yeah, I just put because, in a new patio. Sorry? I just put in a new patio. Oh, that's good. Because she's talking about this patio and she's saying about your plans to have a very pretty garden. And she joins you in that because I'm not saying one second your mother was a gardener, but she loved it. You know, she loved it being out there and she's saying that you felt over the last couple of years that you've missed out because you haven't been able to sit somewhere where you feel is quite pretty mm -hmm. you understand that yes right okay i just know with your mum 
that um, as, I, as I get to know, oh, no, that's, that's wrong. As she gets to know me, you know, that's your mom. She has to get to know me. Would you understand that? Mm -hmm. And then she's okay. You know, at first she's a little bit suspicious, but now she's all right. <laughs> and I know too that she, I have no idea why she wanted to show me this, but she's just shown me, of all things in this place, an electric blanket. <laughs> Would you understand the significance of that? Well, she bought me one. Oh, that would do. I've never seen one of those from the spring water in my life before. But she just wanted to say, tell her about the electric blanket. Because she obviously remembers it. And I can't imagine that you would need one here. But that's what she said. Okay. Um, I just know that she's, she's here and she, she would spend a lot of time uh, talking and laughing and joking. But please don't look at those last three years. I'm talking about up until then. I know also she wanted to say thank you to you, and I know you don't need that, but she needs to say it. And she talks about the fact that you would, towards the end of her, her life, you would hold her arm to support her. And she's saying to you how gentle you were, and I know that's something that was an issue for her. Others were not quite so gentle with her. Would you understand that? Yes. Okay. And she's just saying thank you to you. You know, I could work with your mum all day. You know, she's a, she's a fabulous character. I can't get across to you enough, because I only have vocabulary, to tell you just how much your mother loves you and cares about you. And the fact that she's holding on to you so dearly because she says to you, that's my girl. I want my girl to know that I've not gone anywhere. It's so important for her. I also know too that your mum comes close to you in the evening when you sit down quietly and you feel her presence and you also smell her perfume which is very flowery. I can't tell you what it is but I know it's very flowery. Would you understand that? Yes. And she says to you, I'm just letting you know that is me. You may not be always 100% sure, maybe 90, but I just want you to be 100% sure. Please take her Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Um, I'm aware of a gentleman here who I feel is a dad. And I know that uh, this is a man who is very, very sociable. I know he likes dancing, and it's ballroom dancing. Don't think he was a dancer by profession. But I certainly feel that that was something that he did in his younger days. I know too that he was a man who extended courtesy wherever he went. So he was the sort of man that would stand up for a woman when she walked in the room or opened a door, all those sort of old fashioned values. And I know too that this is a dad who died of a heart attack. And I know that he had been unwell but nobody expected him to die at the time. Does anyone understand this, please? You do, okay. You understand all of that, including the dancing? Yes. Okay. Um, because I know with, it, with your father that he was a man who, um, he, it's a strange thing to say, but he just said to me, I liked protocol. Oh, God, yes. You understand? <laughs> That's a weird one for me, okay? <laughs> but, but that's what he said. And it's like everything has to be right. He's very exacting, you know? Even his, his mind, his job, everything was so exacting, so precise. I know his, his word was precision. That's him, you know? And I know too that he was a man who would have backed off from any kind of emotional problem. There's absolutely no way he could do with it. You know, it's like, oh, keep me out. And, and I certainly feel that if there was anybody came to the door that needed help, or anybody came to the door that needed to be dealt with, your father wasn't there. Okay, he'd have gone. He would have left somebody else to do that. Sorry. Yeah, okay, um, certainly feel that about him. Please don't think one second, I think he's a shirker. I just think that he's very clever, you know. <laughs> I just think. You know, it's like, you know, a quick exit left, you know, that, that's your dad. I know that he was an avid reader, and I do actually see the National Geographic magazine with him. Yes, yes. 
very true. And I know that he loved he, he loved to read the articles, but he also loved the pictures mm -hmm. because he was interested in all sorts of things in life, you know, and he was very interested in nature. If he would have had a, if he was able to, he would have had a very different life from the life he had. He would have incorporated more of nature in his life. Would you understand yes. that? You know, travel more and those mm -hmm. sorts of things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I just know with him that everybody loved your dad and still does. That's what he tells me because he talks about the community loving him. You know, everybody knew him. I'm not saying they knew him intimately, but they, they knew who he was and had respect for him understand that because wherever he goes somebody acknowledges him and just says hello to him. Your dad would have known a lot of people. Okay? But I, I certainly feel with him that um, towards the end of his life he had been unwell but didn't realize just how ill he was. Yeah um, and just was ticking along really and sort of just keep going you know um, and I know too that he had real problems with his digestive system because I know that he was on a lot of medication for that. Now your medication and ours is completely different, I'm not even going to go down that road. But I certainly know that whatever this was, this stuff that he took, it was white liquid. So I'm going to leave that with you. It was like a milk of magnesia. Okay. Okay, you got it. Okay, thank you. Um, because he would just show me. I also know with your father that he was very sensible. Would you understand that? He'd never drink too much or he'd never do anything excessively. You know, he was very moderate, if that makes sense, you know. And I certainly feel with him that um, he's got a great sense of humour, I will tell you that, you know. You may have had to dig a bit deep to find it sometimes, but he certainly has a good sense of humour. But he liked one-liner jokes. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> you know, that sort of one-liner stuff, you know, not long jokes, you know. That, that's your dad. He just would have, he, he has that kind of humour that he could laugh easily at something silly. That's the point. I just know with him that he, he wants to get close to you today. I know that you've been, he, well, this is what he tells me, that you've been thinking about him a lot. Mm -hmm. And you've been wondering how he is, and you've been saying to your dad, I haven't heard from you for a while. Okay, isn't it time I heard from you? And he says to you, you know, I've always been there, but everybody else gets in first. Mm -hmm. Would you understand that? Because that's his, that's his personality, you know. He's, he's a bit laid back in that, you know. And he also would have, he also believes that he would only say something that needed to be said. Oh, that's true. I no more. He doesn't waste words. Okay. But I certainly feel that this was a man who liked crosswords because I can see the paper folded at the crossword and he's done half of it and he would kill me if I finished it off for him. You know, that's the sort of person he is. Okay. I just know that he wanted to show you that he hasn't gone anywhere. I know that you think of your dad when you're outside, when you're in a beautiful view and you say to yourself, my dad would have liked this. And he's able to see it through your eyes. He, he, um, anyone knows me knows I do not do nature, okay? But I can repeat words, you know, because he's talking about butterflies, he's talking about the significance of them, and he's talking about the beauty of a tree. Please remember, I'm just repeating the words. You know, it'd be very easy for me to tell you that, but that doesn't come easy to me. And he says that very recently, bought some flowers that were very brightly coloured. Well, do every... Oh, okay. So he's talking about the beauty of them, you yeah. see, and how you don't just take them for granted. You look into them, mm -hmm. and you feel the colour, and, and, you, and you feel the cre creativity that's, that's formed the flower. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And it saddens you when they start to fade. Mm -hmm. Because he talks about you try to keep them going for that very last day before you'll throw them away. So he's just trying to show you just how close he is to you. He is a lovely man, your dad. I like him a lot. I know that he's a man who um, 
I don't show his emotion, as I said earlier on, not at all, mm -hmm. but I know he's got nothing to hide behind as I'm talking to him, and he is very emotional as I'm talking to you. You've only got my word for that, I'm afraid. But I certainly know that he would have done everything in his power to show that he was a tough cookie, and he wasn't. All right, so please take your dad's love, smash him out to work with him. Thank you very much for working with me.